At Mobileye, we've been innovating around driver assist solutions for 25 years. Started with a single camera and a single chip, and we've gone from there to additional cameras, uh, additional sensors, additional chips. But sometimes uh, we forget that important safety features like automatic emergency braking, lane keeping assist, uh, forward collision warning haven't always been part of the conversation. We thought that was a good opportunity to uh, check in with our VP of Business Development, Nimrod Brickman, uh, to see where the industry is coming from and where it's going. Hi Nimrod. Hi Ben. So over the past decade we've seen a dramatic increase both in the number of safety features available in cars as well as in the level of adoption of those features. Tell us a bit about why that is. So you're right, for the past 10 years we're seeing an increased amount of safety features coming into new vehicles on the road and uh, there are three main drivers for that. One is the car manufacturers themselves who are trying to promote this as uh, kind of a, a new cool feature or in a, as an added value to the end consumer. The second one would be regulation. We're seeing regulatory bodies like um, GSR in Europe or the new regulation coming up in the United States uh, that kind of mandate that all new vehicles will be equipped with those, um, with those systems uh, when launched and we're, we're seeing this trend and expansion across, across the globe also in the next years. And the third one would be the standardization and, and star rating like Euro NCAP for example which kind of pushes the envelope of the safety features delivered into the market. Let's talk a bit about one of the areas in, in driver assist that I think is a bit uh, less well understood. There's kind of driver assist features and then there's autonomous vehicles. Uh, there's something in the middle there called L2 Plus, often referred to. Uh, can you shed a bit of light on this segment? Yeah, so l let's start from the uh, L2 Plus term. So it's, it's a bit ambiguous, so let's try to make it clear. So uh, first of all, um, we like to, to refer to that segment uh, in two vectors. One would be your hands, whether you're driving with your hands on or off. Second vector would be whether you're driving with your eyes on, basically are you engaged and responsible for driving or you're not looking at the road and basically giving the system to drive uh, on behalf of you. So hands on or off, eyes on or off. Level two plus is when you're driving with your hands off, but your eyes on, so you're responsible for driving, still the system drive, drive itself uh, throughout the, uh, the full scenarios. Now, we're seeing this segment increasing dramatically by, by OEMs uh, coming and, and asking us about uh, these features and also with our supervision solution that we've launched um, a couple of years ago. And while most of the um, uh, companies addressing this uh, are with um, different types of sensors like radars and fusion between radars and cameras, uh, Mobileye Backbone Technology, the camera, um, is the way that we are building the solution around. So we believe that cameras are the most comprehensive sensor that, uh, that uh, one can rely on. And whether it's our surround ADAS using six cameras for highway applications or 11 cameras, the supervision solution for all road types, we're relying on the cameras as the main sensor. And we believe that this brings the, high, the most performance uh, or the highest performance possible while still maintaining the highest safety possible that we can deliver. Wow, so we're kind of seeing also a convergence of safety and also comfort features. For sure. Uh, in a way. Okay, now what about the consumer, kind of the average person buying a new car? Uh, what do you see in terms of uh, what they are looking for, what they're expecting in, in cars in terms of safety? So I think that, that's interesting because just like, just like seat belts introduced in the 50s, and uh, airbags introduced in the 70s. Same goes for advanced driver assistance system introduced in 2000. It take a few years mm -hmm. for the consumers to really acknowledge and appreciate the value of those systems and how it can save lives and make their um, um, whole experience much, much better. Here, what we see is that on top of the, um, the mandated um, safety features that are required by law, we see much more features required by the, um, the consumers and the OEMs, um, safety features that are uh, more advanced than the required one, and also comfort features in addition to that. Let's talk about autonomous cars for a minute. Um, on the one hand, the technology's there. On the other hand, they're not commonplace on our roads quite yet. Um, what do you see that needs to happen uh, between now and when they become much more common? So I believe that in order for us to see autonomous vehicles um, on the road, we need to achieve three main points. The first one would be 
to have, uh, it's obvious that the autonomous vehicle must be safe, but it needs to be also transparent and create trust with the end consumer. So once we'll manage to have this uh, type of relationship in between the system and the driver, we would see much more of those on the road. Second one would be cost effectiveness. The system must be cost effective and cannot uh, be too much expensive um, because otherwise people won't buy it and, and um, that's the end of it. And third point would be usefulness. It must be useful and not stop every uh, a couple of hundred meters. It must continuously drive in all uh, the intended roads that, that we are uh, uh, intended it to, to drive in. And I think a good example for that is our chauffeur product that they're working together with the VW Group and, and Audi in order to bring that into the market in, in 2027. And we believe that that would expand um, into uh, uh, more OEMs towards the end of the decade and the beginning of the of next decade. As a way to close up the conversation, um, we talked about the trends in the last 10 years in uh, automotive safety and autonomous vehicles. What do you see kind of going forward? What do you see in the next decade in this industry? I think we'll see much more automation coming into our lab. We expect that in the next 10 years, every new vehicle that will come into the market would have um, advanced driver assistance systems and not only in specific geographies like we see today. Mm -hmm. I expect that in the, in the next 10 years we would see much more comfort features. Uh, it will be much more common like hands-off applications that we just see now as an increasing demand. And for sure autonomous vehicles would be uh, much more uh, present in our life, kind of bringing back time to the consumer. And for sure, I believe that the public will see the advantage of it. Looking forward to that. Thanks for your time. Thank you.